Hello everyone, welcome to Adobe Live. We are here live at Max, and uh, I'm here as your host, Christine Arth. I'm here with Isabel Lee. Hi. Hi everyone. Isabel is here as the Adobe Residency Program. She is gonna talk a little bit through what she's been working on, as well as some new Illustrator and InDesign features. Really excited. I know, I'm really excited too. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're out there in chat, definitely say hello to us, let us know where you're from. And also, let us know if you're here live at Max chatting with us. This is going to be a great show. <laughs> so, Isabel, I'm curious, uh, tell us a little bit about what you're working on right now for Creative Residency. Yeah, so I'm an Adobe Creative Resident, and what that basically means is that Adobe is funding my salary for the year, and they're giving me yeah. access to mentors, <laughs> and I get to make all kinds of fun projects. So for some people, that's just one big year-long project, but for me, Amazing. I'm doing lots of smaller <laughs> projects. We have um, like a real good crew over yeah. here right now too. This is awesome. <laughs> Which I would show you. You're like, so I'm working on a lot of stuff <laughs> and we're also fixing computers. But you're not allowed to see it. <laughs> no, you can't see it, but we will show. Yeah. Um, well, we'll show some of it because yeah. some of it's live right now at Max. You have an exhibit sure. up here for Adobe Residency. And then there's also another big, huge poster that is uh, featuring your clockwork. Yes. So I like to say clockwork. Clockwork. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm doing stuff for Adobe Fonts here and for the Creative Residency booth. So anybody's here, come and say yeah, hi. Yeah, come say hi. Get a free pin, get some stickers, uh, <laughs> definitely get your photo taken with Isabel. So. <laughs> <laughs> Buy me a new laptop. Yeah, right? <laughs> Do all the things. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so we're ready to roll now. I think okay. that um, that means that we can probably take a look at Isabel's yeah, work, look go. at her screen, and uh, get some pretty cool projects up and rolling. <laughs> yeah, so I'm doing a bunch of different kinds of stuff this year. Um, so I want to, but my focus is mainly on how you visualize language. Mm -hmm. So um, that comes in the form of I designed a set of products, which is some of the stuff we're going to work on today. Amazing. Um, uh, the clocks is what we were talking about earlier. I uh, love it. Yeah. So I asked a bunch of people, um, you know, what it kind of time felt like, and uh, people said, "Oh, I wish I had an extra hour in the day." So I designed an optimist clock that has 13 hours. I love it. <laughs> so optimistic of you. <laughs> but then I, I well, not quite, because I actually I designed one where all the numbers had fallen down as well. Yeah, because right? I was like, sometimes it just feels meaningless. Like it just doesn't work all the time. So, <laughs> yeah, completely. <laughs> so it's kind of about trying to be fun with language and more playful. Um, you know, I oh, tried I to see uh, if we could visualize the word balancing act actually balancing. And, totally. But it's I'm really interested in kind of mixing like sort of traditional print design with mm -hmm. new tech. So these kind of work with augmented reality and stuff as well, which is really cool. Amazing. Well, and the photography yeah. is also really nice and bespoke, and you've done such a good job at looking at the perspective and how you want to actually visualize your work, which is something that I think a lot of people mm -hmm. can learn from just watching this. I think there's a lot of really boring kind of photography out there. And totally. For me, like because a lot of these products were insights based on kind of things that I discovered while talking to people in the real world. I wanted right. to take my products and put them back in the real world. Amazing. So, yeah. And you're going to learn it all here today because we're going to go over some of the new features for Illustrator and InDesign yes. and uh, get to see Isabel in action, which is going to be even cooler. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> a little bit scary. <laughs> yeah, a little scary, but you know, we're here for you. Exactly. I'm here for you. <laughs> I won't make you dance, I promise. Oh, please don't. <laughs> so for those of you on chat, say hello. Uh, we've got 7up Design Studio, Jan Eric, Julia, Barris, Siller. Siller's in the house. <laughs> Tim Mo Best, the Mo Beast. <laughs> Ravazan and Alberto and Natalie. Wow, there's a lot of people from all over. This is yeah. pretty exciting. What a great show. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's obviously really busy today. And with yeah. all the hype around us, like we're doing this kind of live to totally. people in the conference as <laughs> Yeah, well. and there's people here as well. So what you don't see is a ton of people <laughs> staring at Isabel right now. So pressure's on, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm going to be talking through some of the new features in Illustrator and in mm -hmm. Design and how I use those in my work. Perfect. Um, so I showed you a little bit. I design a lot of type posters. Mm -hmm. um, so these are some of the ones that I made for this first collection Fantastic. about trying to visualize language. And the thing, some of the new things that are really, really cool that I discovered this morning. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I just discovered some of this this morning. Well, we're all learning together because I exactly. think that's what's so cool about Max is that they're showing new features 
in the moment and then we're actually working on them in yeah. the moment so it's very much a live experience <laughs> it's really really cool and like some of the things are just i always think when you know these updates come out i'm like am i actually ever going to use yeah any i do too yeah. like surprisingly but but actually i i opened some of these projects that i've been working on and a lot of them already I discovered are quite helpful. Like there's the the properties panel has been updated in Illustrator. Oh yeah, um, which is really helpful because it means that I don't have to kind of hunt around for my toolbars because I'm really terrible. I'm always trying to search for my oh, me different too. Toolbars. And everything's closed up because you know you're trying to be efficient with your screen space. So exactly. You're gonna close everything and then you're like, oh shoot, where's color? <laughs> where's type? Where can I edit this? Exactly. Yeah. But it's really great because now whatever you're doing, as soon as we've got kind of proper. Um, we kind of selecting something, then it means that it gives you all the proper things in your properties toolbox. You don't have to go running around for whatever it is you want and find your fill and your stroke Perfect. in this case. Yeah, so to give an example of that, you're selecting a couple different things and it'll automatically pull open because that's outlined, right? Yeah, exactly. So therefore, if it's outlined and it's not live type, you've got color, you've got pathfinder, uh, transition, transform. So there's a lot of ways that uh, the properties new toolbar can actually help pull everything together all at once. And it's really cool as well because then if you're working with type and stuff, it helps you out in that way. So Totally. You know, and it just makes my life a lot easier when I'm trying to design posters like these. But the other, the other thing that's also pretty helpful is, so my work is very typographic based. And so I find that a lot of the time I don't use these kind of tools that are on the side. But we now, we now can actually have custom toolbars, which for people who do specific things in Illustrator, like yeah. that's, that's a game changer. No, it is a game changer. And then with that property is now that you have that open, it's pretty cool. When you were selecting type, one of the great features that Adobe has now is with all of the new typefaces for Adobe fonts. Yes. Um, so that automatically pulls it up in properties and you can see all the different fonts that you're able to actually go through in, uh, in real time. Yeah, so, so this is pretty really cool. cool. Yeah, like you can scroll through all of them and they'll automatically change and update so that you can see the different fonts. You can even choose by filtering out, so filtering for families, filtering for different properties. Um, so it's pretty cool. The classifications yeah. and properties really uh, detail out what you're specifically looking for. And this is super useful because like, so I, I had a poster I was designing um, where about exposure for artists and how it's often unpaid. Yes. And um, when I was designing it, um, I had a typeface that it was set in, but I decided I wanted to kind of experiment with sort of changing ooh. some of these around. Ah, um, I was so excited. I'm like, ooh, yeah, money sign. <laughs> exactly, because that's this always missing. Great. Yeah, right? But it was always missing. I found that actually I really didn't like this pound yeah. sign. I just didn't really sit well with the rest. And I spent forever going through, like looking All at All the different. glyphs? <laughs> oh, man. But now it's really cool because Oh gosh, because you can highlight just one character. Exactly. So wow. this kind of makes it a lot easier. And I'm learning that right now. Could you guys tell? Because I was <laughs> super amazed. I was like, whoa! I was like, this is going to change. This changes everything. Because, yeah, because I mean, sometimes if I really don't like the character and I'm trying to find something slightly different. Yes. But it also means even if I don't like any of the fonts I've actually got in my family, totally. then. You're like, I, just switch families, switch your classification. This well, is exactly. awesome. Because like, if I, I know what I want, that's the yeah. thing. Because I'm like, well, I definitely I want to like, I know what I want. I know, always know what I want with time. <laughs> That's a sign of a very true designer. I know what I want and I will find it. And now it's even easier. Well, Everyone's like, this is so awesome. And even Tim Mobiest, he has very nice with, um, <laughs> with the ease change. That's pretty amazing. Nice job, chat. Nice job. But yeah, so that's, that's something that's that really, really so cool. That is so cool. Oh, I love that you can change glyphs out. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be such a time saver because I really always like, I felt that I was in the know by going up to glyphs and like changing things out, but it's just so time consuming. So it just it just makes your life a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, um, you've got when you've got particularly when you're trying to do something so simple. Oh, completely. But well, and with Adobe Fonts now, it's all free. It's all included yeah. with your Creative Cloud subscription. So you don't have to worry about going into upload more. You can do it right from that panel which is a game changer. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And like that's the thing is like there's so much more being added cool. all the time. Yeah, it's like and because you know there's a load of fonts on there from Monotype now and stuff yeah. like that and 
So I think a lot of the time people think that it's also just Adobe's fonts, but it's not. It's, no, it's, it's, like, it's a bunch of different foundries that have uh, been partnering with Adobe for a very long time, specifically Monotype, yeah. and they're one of the largest foundries in the world, representing some of the best typographers and artists out there. So you're really getting a huge value by um, having a Creative Cloud subscription and then also being able to search through all of those fonts. I mean. Yeah. It's, this is going to change everything for design. I feel like this year is going to be a really exciting one to watch what designers are doing with the new capabilities. Particularly like, yeah, so in, like in something like this, I, I just, I don't use half of these tools and it's just yeah. because of, for my craft, it's just, they're just not well, you're, like, you're very specific with yeah. what you need and you want to have it in the right place. And I always found like Illustrator to be really intimidating with all the stuff I don't need. Or sometimes I'm just doing one particular job, like I'm just right. making type posters or totally. I'm just doing illustration. So the fact that now we can actually drag tools out of the toolbar or I can, so I, what I can basically do is I can just make a toolbar for type Amazing. Which is really, really cool. This um, is so cool. One of the new uh, features is custom toolbars, so you yes. can. I think it was funny. Someone in there, I think it was either Jan, Eric, or um, someone else that's always in chat asked, but can we put a banana icon in the toolbar? <laughs> I don't think that that's yet something we can do, but I'm sure Adobe is going to figure out a way that we can do that. Maybe that's going to be in sneaks today, so I hope you guys are all watching here from I mean, we, we know. I think they have some emoji fonts and stuff that they've yeah, actually right? programmed in now. You so. could probably do it, I bet, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, not today, and we're not going to do that live <laughs> because, you know, that takes so much time, but I think it's available. <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, so that's definitely something to look into, if, you know, if someone really wants to put a banana in there. <laughs> yeah, if you want a banana in there, you could do it. Um, pretty cool, though. So yeah. if you guys have questions for Isabel, this is a great chance to ask her any of your burning questions. Um, we are here for the next hour, and uh, Isabel's going to talk about creative residency with Adobe and some of her work as well that she's been working on for her salaried year, yeah. which is pretty awesome. It is pretty cool. <laughs> And also then you get to come, and like, I get to fly out to LA and do this. Totally, really yeah. Exciting. I mean, there's really nothing better. I think it's definitely worth looking into. And for those of you who don't know about Adobe Residency, the program applications are open from early January to early February. So if you're really interested in becoming an Adobe resident, uh, I think that there's some really cool opportunities for you to apply. Specifically, if you're in countries that they're accepting applications yes. from Germany, the UK, the US, Canada, and um, we're even opening a couple new countries this year, quite possibly Japan. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity worldwide yeah. if you're a designer looking to really stretch your skill set as well as um, be able to take on a creative project that you most likely may not have been able to do without this support. Definitely, and I think it's it's one of those things where actually there's so many different disciplines. Like even within kind of the 2018 cohort, we've got mm -hmm. you, uh, like user Oh, this is great! Yeah, so these are all of your cohort. This yeah, is this yeah. is awesome. <laughs> uh, children's book illustration, got more photography, but like even the two photographers, like one's doing food and then one's totally. doing a project about making the elderly more visu more visible and in society. Oh, amazing! So, like, and then we've got me. I uh, was like, hey, that's, that's me. You. I know her. <laughs> Smirking away. Yeah, right? You're like, hey, what's up? <laughs> You're like, yeah, I'm smirking. <laughs> I think I didn't even know the picture was being taken. Oh, that's that so point. great. I'm just You're all like, uh -huh. <laughs> But yeah, so it's really cool because like it doesn't just have to be design or like, I think. Yeah, there's like, so much design, mm. like so much that they touch, photography specifically, product design even too. Yeah. I think it's really what your creative outlet is. And um, as long as you have a portfolio that supports your dreams and what you're trying to aspire to be, that's a great way to get into Adobe Live and get into the Adobe Residency. And the, uh, the guys who've done the program before, like the alumni have gone to, on to do really cool things. So. Yeah, completely. It, it's such a supportive team. And you know, as you know, we have Isabel here as well as Nadine. They're also both at Max and they have a booth so they are able to get the word out of what they're designing and share their inspiration. And it's a lot of great exposure for um, early stage creatives with really sharp design skills that are really looking to go full time in a pro area of these artistic areas of passion, I would say. I think the other thing is they give you access to mentors too, which is super important because it, if you yeah. don't know where you're going or you've got, you're at point A and you want to get to point B. Like totally. I'd, I'd work with a lot of type, but I've started making the typefaces for themselves. I love that, yeah. by the way. I was so excited <laughs> when we met last week. I'm like, oh, you're doing typefaces? I'm like, oh, we're new BFFs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 
really cool because like, I didn't really know how to do it before and then I was on Adobe Live last week showing people yeah, how to make yeah, them, yeah. which is like, oh, okay. So cool, yeah, it's brilliant. Um, I think the mentorship is really great because yeah. Like you're saying, you may have all of these aspirations, but you're not sure which one to really focus on at that point. And since you have a full year, exactly, you get to focus on quite a few things. <laughs> yeah, like so I went from like actually making products and things like that. The, the first project I did, mm -hmm. I, I really just looked at products. And then most more recently, I've been experimenting with variable fonts. Oh, love yeah. that. Yeah, it's so cool, especially when you, the, the capability in Adobe Fonts is so great if you're able yeah. to produce a variable font and then actually utilize it so that when you're scrolling back and forth, you can set the font so that it looks consistent when it's really large and really small. And I think it's such a good use case. It, it definitely is. And for me, I also, I like to try some of the more fun experiments. So totally. I've done kind of some experiments seeing how we can, some people might have seen it on Twitter, but I basically designed a variable font, which where you, if you clap, um, I know we don't have sound, but you can see when, um, I clap basically the font changes. Nice. Depending on the sound input. I love that. That's just cool programming yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. So yeah, it's really cool because you can do all these kind of like fun sort of experiments with it. Like and it has a lot of kind of practical applications, but it also means that you can actually kind of play with fonts and really yeah. manipulate them in real life, which is something that I never thought I'd be able to do, but the no, residency has given me a chance. Yeah, and you know, you're able to really flex in a lot of different areas, which I love about your portfolio is that it's not just one thing. You're really trying to see where you want to focus on after you're done with residency, you know, and you're getting to have a lot of creative outlets that lets yeah. you express all of your talent. It's, it's really exciting as well, because for me, I get to kind of put a load of stuff out there and then I can just see what people respond to. And people, yeah. people love the, the font that, that I made, the one that kind of responded to sound. Oh, and nice. I've now coded yeah. it so it dances to drop it like it's hot. Oh, Snoop I top. love that. <laughs> um, you guys should be going and checking this out right now. You yeah. can dance to drop it like it's hot immediately. I know I will be. <laughs> but it's, yeah. just, it's just good fun. And that's kind of the good thing about the residency years. It lets you really like play with things. Like you're not just, like a client would never commission you to make something like no, that. No, so. no, not at all. And, and I think that that's what's the exciting part is that maybe they will now because they know the capabilities that you have. Yeah. And they also know that there is the possibility to do something really interesting and outlandish and, you know, courageous. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's kind of good. I mean, that's kind of what the residency is. Yeah, like, exactly. It's, it's like, how far can you push How far this? can you take it? Yeah. <laughs> how far? How <laughs> How slow can you go? <laughs> um, so if you guys are interested, definitely check out the website for more details. Yes. Uh, and if you have any answers or questions, the answers will be there. Yeah, not answers, <laughs> but questions. If you have any answers to the big life exactly. questions, I'll hear them too. <laughs> exactly, yes. Um, but the website is adobe.com backslash go backslash creative residency. And I'm sure that you'll be able to see that in chat. Chat is very good about putting up all the URLs, so please yeah. Check it out. And uh, we're looking for some really great, sharp new talent for this upcoming year. Get your books together and showcase it between January and February to apply. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool program. And I honestly didn't think I would get in. And it's the first time they opened the program to the UK. So, oh, so great. It's really cool. I'm so glad you got in or else we wouldn't be here with you right now. How cool is that? <laughs> it's, just, it's just a world away from what I ever thought I would be doing. And Completely. So that's so cool. Oh, that's wonderful. So uh, let's take a look through some of your work. I know you have some stuff up on your screen right now. Yeah. And uh, I'd love to share with chat and share with live um, what you've been working on as far as your layouts. Yeah, so some of the posters that we were looking at, so um, they made the kind of products we looked at on my behalf. So what I'm trying to work on today is I'm putting together like a press release that I can send out that oh, kind wonderful. of showcases my work. Um, and I try and do that through InDesign because I have all these campaign images. Mm -hmm. And then I also, whenever I'm working, I try to collect kind of like pack shots because when I'm, when I'm kind of doing all my design work, it's really important to sort of have an overview of everything. So when you're sending it to the press, they not only get kind of really interesting images of your work, but Completely. they've also got like, you know, for all of them, we've got cutouts and we've got, you know, all these kind of like gray background images. Yep. So you can really see what you're getting. And I found that kind of communication around the stuff you make if you want to sell it, it's really important. Yeah, you really do have to focus on how you're being perceived in yeah. the area that you're putting your work. So I, I love this. This is going to be a great 
everybody watching, definitely take notes. <laughs> yeah. And for anybody who, like, InDesign is, is really kind of like where it's like my happy place. Um, <laughs> I love it. You're like, I love you, InDesign. I, I do. I really am needy for life. <laughs> InDesign, InDesign is just, it's, but it's where everything comes together. And anybody who saw me on the live streams last week, like, mm -hmm. if there's anything I want to do, I usually do it in InDesign. Well, but, completely. I think that everyone has their program of choice, especially for those Adobe lovers. I know I'm an Illustrator girl, so. <laughs> But, but uh, you learn so much from yeah. each other just by watching. And I think that's the thing is like, I find that it's just a really cool place to like, to bring in everything and put it all together. Even if like, uh, I often edit the photos themselves in Lightroom mm -hmm. or I might make the typography, you know, using Illustrator and Glyphs. Yeah. Um, and then this is where it kind of all, I start putting the layouts together so that people can actually sort of see how my products and stuff Beautiful. Like. Thank you. Yeah, it looks great. Um, so, out of curiosity, I think some people are wondering how long does it take you to put something like this together? Yeah. And uh, you know, how do you start? Like, how do you go about starting? So, for me, the the really important thing to think about is kind of setting up a good grid. If you t if you take the time to really set up your grid, mm -hmm. it makes everything else that happens a lot easier. So, for me, I. I normally work with 12 columns. I believe this one's actually 18, but that's because I have a lot of images and a lot of really small text. Yeah. Um, this is set, so obviously I work in British paper sizes. I love this. You're like, British paper, <laughs> British paper sizes? sizes. So this is set, I said A3 on the live stream the other day and everyone went, what? Everyone's like, what? I'm like, no, come on. If you guys design, you should know what A3 is. That's just the fancy name for other paper. <laughs> I mean, is, well, what, what do you guys do for the measurements, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I always try and set up, um, oh, it's actually A4, this one. So I always try and set up it to a standard A size. I usually send these out digitally, but I always make it a format that you could print because people often print these things out and totally. then stick them on the wall. Yeah, off. and then you're like, and then my work looks bad if they do it in a format that's yeah. not ready for their <laughs> general letter size paper. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I always set mine up in A4. Um, or A3, and then I try and set my margins and columns out. Um, and it just really depends on like what you're doing. Like here, I've got a lot of spreads where I'm using different sizes of image, and I want everything to work together in a grid. Mm -hmm. And I want the kind of type and images to work together. So I prefer more columns, and I try and, somebody last week was asking me about how I decide my gutter size. Yep. And essentially, I just try and make sure that it's always the same width or wider than any kind of like, vertical space or leading I've got so got it. that you never kind of get confused as to where you're reading. Yeah, we've got some serious grid hype out there. Alberto Silva's like, <laughs> grid life, hashtag grid life, grid hype. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's definitely a certain subset of designers who are yeah. all about the grid. But it used to scare me. They have me. like grid tattoos. <laughs> They're like, hashtag, I love the grid. <laughs> it, I mean, honestly, but it used to terrify me. I was like, totally. I, I'm not great at math, so <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure like on my live stream last week, I was insisting I had a 12 column grid. I think it was eight or something. <laughs> You're like, it's a 12 yeah. column grid. You're like, but you know, whatever, eight, 12, so yeah. many grids. So sorry to anybody who watched that. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> I love it. You're like, sorry guys, I apologize. <laughs> but it's just like once you have a grid set out, it just means that your layouts kind of like design themselves really fast and Completely. you can have really varied layouts, but using all of the same And then stuff. you also are keeping everything in the right space and right area yeah. so that, you know, nothing's really off because I think that's another pet peeve of designers is yeah. like, we ourselves look at things and make sure that they're aligned. So how do we then make sure that other people feel that way too by setting a really good grid to begin with. <laughs> and also sometimes it's okay, sometimes I try a grid and then I realize it's not actually working and I go back and, and like redo the grid. One. Yeah. Like I think my original one had a, had a lot less on it, but I realized I needed it to be a bit more complicated. Yeah. But also the other really cool thing is if you've structured everything on a grid, then when you're kind of setting up your document, like we've got they've got special tools now where you can adjust layouts. Mm -hmm. So that can help you, and if you've got everything on a grid and you want to change everything, it'll help oh, resize yeah. it Oh yeah, adaptive layout, yeah. very cool. So that's one of the new features for Adobe InDesign is adaptive layout, and what Isabel is talking about is that if you have a typical spread that's, let's say, you know, A3 by A3, yeah. and then you decide that you want to go into something that's more um, horizontal even further, like let's say we go into an 11 by 17 layout, yeah. then what it is is you type that in and you select adaptive layout just like she had shown, and that'll automatically adapt your layout to a different size without losing any of the valuable placement that you've already done and set up through your grid. And as soon, yeah, as, as long as you've done it in your grid, then it, it knows where the elements are and it'll try and help space yeah. them for you. I mean, so. there might be a little bit of tweaking here or there, but yeah. it'll definitely save you 
a lot of time and also a lot of days of design that you would have to do in order to redo yeah. an entire document, especially with editorial being so long. Because for something like this as well, like you might decide you want it in this format when you're sending it out online, but then you might decide actually I want it from a smaller format if yep. I'm going to print it. Um, so that's kind of really helpful. There's, a, there's another couple of tools which I found are actually really helpful. Like the first one is um, that the objects, it's, I can't even remember what it's called, but the, it helps content aware fit. Oh, content aware yeah. fit. Yeah, that's a great one. So um, essentially, yeah. Like yeah, if, maybe walk us through what you do for content aware fit, which is also a new tool in Adobe InDesign. Yeah, so I have a lot of things like these sort of pack shots, um, and also like campaign images and you know we've got things like clocks and the actual images that I have that I work with mm -hmm. often they they're slightly kind of different or you know they might not be entirely so for example if I take some of the prints and I go to a gray background you can see sometimes they're not centered exactly in the frame. Totally. Or in the case of my campaign images. Um, We're like, who has time to center? <laughs> we don't need to anymore because content aware will do it for us. <laughs> but it all helps you. Like sometimes it does. It does help. This if, is great. <laughs> if I have a print, like I have an image of one of my posters like this. Yeah. And I kind of think, oh, OK, that's a really cool image. Um, Right, because if you drag it in, it might not automatically find where the focal point yeah, is. Yeah, I used to spend a lot of time kind of sat there doing, going like this. Yes. And, and what this really helps do, in fact, I'll show you with that image because it's pretty cool, is um, if I select this image here and I drop it into like a text frame that I've got here. Yep. See, it's pretty Automatic, accurate. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. accurate. You can still move it around, exactly. which is a nice uh, a, a way to actually physically crop and curate, but, but it just makes it a lot easier, particularly it when saves you're doing a lot like of time this. for sure. Yeah, because that's the thing is if you have this many images that you're trying to put into an InDesign document, all yeah, the time, especially for editorial because it's so yeah. long and there's so much that you're doing that uh, being able to have the adaptive fit is something that you can definitely utilize to save time to really focus on what's necessary, which is grid building. Yeah. <laughs> and like even this one, like this, it hasn't got it quite right, but this doing this has made it a lot easier for me to just nudge it over to where it's supposed to be. Yes, and then exactly. everything is a lot easier to deal with. Yeah, I think it, uh, Adobe has created a really good creative eye already so that it's really looking at what's the most interesting crop and yeah. uh, what's still going to keep your content in focus. Sometimes I'm kind of interested to see where it thinks, yeah, right? it thinks like, the focus is Yeah, right? You're like, where does it think the focus should be? You're like, oh, that's kind of cool, yeah. I found that with like some of the some of the clock images. Like, I was like, OK, like I've got, I've got this image here of my clock, but the background is quite pale. Yeah. And I was like, hmm, I wonder where it thinks uh, it thinks the actual area of interest is. Yeah, let's is. see. And it's oh, like, and it puts it on the that's kind of cool, though. You know, there's something really interesting about seeing it so up close. Exactly. But it's kind of, it almost does, there you go, it kind of does your preview shots for you. Totally. But, it's great. But it's great because then, like, for, a, for spreads like these, where I kind of want a few detail shots and then I also want to. Yeah, up close shots. Exactly. Sometimes, like, for example, I'd normally use this image, mm -hmm. but I could have used the one before and it would have just cropped it for me. Yeah. And that's kind of another way to make your layout more interesting is if, particularly if you're dealing with like products and stuff like these, Completely. just vary it like that. Oh, there's a lot of people out in chat. Nan is like, that's what I've been searching for for years. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then Raiden's like, all oh, those lines scare me. I'm like, yeah, Raiden, we know sometimes grid life isn't yeah. for everyone. <laughs> Some, so great. Alberto's asking a really interesting question. He's asking if the content will be at 100% 300 DPI if it's for print. Now, so like for anybody who's not familiar, if you have images you're printing, they should be 300 DPI. Yep. So within this frame that you're printing and sometimes people blow them up bigger. And yeah, they, you know, and then it's grow. lossy and you're like, oh no. <laughs> and I don't think it does that yet, but I think that would actually be a really cool feature. That would be a cool feature. Probably you. in uh, the next iteration. Yeah. And for those of you who Clarice, I think is asking, how do I get this? All you have to do is update your Creative Cloud applications and you can do that directly from your toolbar. So. If you go to your Creative Cloud app, in apps it should have that you uh, have new updates for all of the applications, Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, uh, and just hit open, and there you go. 
In fact, that's quite nice. I have this image and it's it's cropped it like this for me. And the original image is like a little bit oh, boring. But actually, I kind of like the crop. I kind of like yeah. the crop, so I'm going to leave it there. I feel like Adobe is now cooler than <laughs> us when it comes to <laughs> cropping. It's like content aware fit is like, yeah, we got this. This is better than me. It's like, I know how your images should look. You don't. Completely. So be quiet. Oh, another thing that they did is the import PDF comments, yes. which I thought was a really interesting tool. I'm not sure how much I'm going to use that personally. But I know that for editorial, you often yeah. send out your pieces to whomever you're working with at the press, or yeah. even you know your mentor. Who knows? But it's, <laughs> also, it's also sometimes even like when I work with clients in the studio. Like what I'll do is I'll send them out a PDF halfway through, and mm -hmm. I'll be like, oh, okay, well, you know, I this is what I'm thinking so far. These are the images I picked. You know, and then sometimes they'll go, actually, oh, I, I don't like this piece of this typeface. Right. Or what's more or usually... Or let's edit the copy here. Exactly. Yeah. What's more usually the case with me is, like, uh, I know here I missed a piece of the product description. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, to detail, what? guys. Um, but, and I always used to have to... All right, so I think we're going to do some chat okay. and win. Um, grid life or no grid life? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. out there who aren't familiar with chat and win all you have to do is be in the chat and you have the chance to win today if you're telling us grid life yes or grid life no we want to hear from you because <laughs> you're gonna win a hundred stickers from sticker mule they're gonna be custom die cut stickers of your choice and they'll be shipped directly to you so it's a pretty good win um, what do you think about grid life <laughs> I mean, I, you're pro grid life. I, I know. I'm life. like, I don't know. I'm kind of more like. I mean, I like I semi like, grid life. You need a little bit of chaos, but within like the confines. Can you of be like grid. half grid life? Like grid sometimes life. grid life, sometimes not. Or is that like a poser? No, you, you did. No, you definitely can. I mean, like, look at my posters. Not all of them are alive. That's not a line <laughs> on a not grid. grid life. But although it is centered, yeah, so I mean, like, space. there's some grid there. Yeah. So you know, I think there's room for both. I love it. There's a lot of grid life out there. They're like, <laughs> yes, midlife grid life. I love that. <laughs> Man, everybody's going crazy about grids. This is good. And stickers. They're like, stickers are oh, also key. You've got grid puns. <laughs> yeah, a lot of grid puns. <laughs> grid puns are the best puns. We had tight puns last week. Oh, so good, right? Oh, we've got a winner. Amazing. Oh, so Kim Raider, you are Yeah. Kim Raider, you've won 100 stickers courtesy of Sticker Mule. Congratulations. Uh, Adobe Live will be sending you that code so that you can download and then you can go print your stickers to your heart's desire. <laughs> <laughs> with a grid or without yeah, a grid. Yeah, with or without here. a grid, that's right. <laughs> Definitely die cut. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, but I think that's the, that's the fun thing. It's like you don't always need to use it for every project that you No, yeah, yeah. You're like grid life, man. You're like, it comes and goes. It does. <laughs> You're like, today it's grid life, tomorrow I don't care about grid. Tomorrow I'm just going to do whatever I like. Tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> tomorrow I do what I want. Today I do grids. <laughs> but it, it is, it is, it does make it a lot easier. Like it makes running through stuff like this and putting everything in just, just a lot faster. Yeah. But then, oh, that was PDF comments. Oh yeah, PDF yeah. comments, yeah. So that was the other thing which was really helpful because if I have my PDF with comments like that, and right, all the you forget to, to put all the important information in, you're yeah. like, oh, whoops. Or you need to change the, particularly for like, you know, these kind of like press sort of releases and or where you're sending out to like suppliers, totally. then you can go into file and then I believe you can go to import PDF comments. Very so rather cool. than having to like stretch your screen over, mm -hmm. and, which is what I always used to do, is that then you can pull in your edits and you can go import comments and then so I can see cool. here. This is so great because the one thing I think a lot of designers are is very visual and this helps yeah. to create a visual sense for your PDF comments so you're not looking at yellow oh. post-its everywhere. <laughs> and also like you can actually, I believe, yeah, if you have, you can choose whether you show the comments on the layer or incredible, not. Incredible, incredible. And that can be really useful because like sometimes I, I, I'll i be like, oh, did I, did I do that yeah, or not? Yeah, you can and, check it off. Yeah. 
and exactly and it just lets me know exactly where that's the oh, other thing perfect it's, it kind of tracks the text so even if though i've changed this pdf slightly yep it's still reminding me that this particular place was where and then when you click that it shows it in the pdf comment bar too yeah exactly so it aligns with what you're looking at and what it's referencing so it's very intuitive so then here it tells me to change the font the other thing i can do is i can decide i disagree with comments so yep. i can decide actually i like the font i picked sorry <laughs> you're like sorry clients <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like this fun is definitely staying here. <laughs> Which is kind of cool because then cool. I can get rid of stuff if I don't agree with Completely. it. Completely. I think it's, you know, it's subjective, uh, subjective comments. <laughs> and you can also double click on, on each of the comments and it will take you to where it is rather than scrolling down oh, looking for it. Brilliant. It's the complete direct hit. So all you have to do is click on it, go straight to the comments so you're not searching and searching and scrolling exactly. through a PDF. So like here, I, I said it was 2,000 centimeters long and the scarf is not 2,000 centimeters yeah. long. You're like, well, you're like, it might not be, it might be 200. They're like, that is a really long scarf. You're like, yeah, I <laughs> planned it that way. <laughs> but at least that, and also then when I've done it, what I can, I can actually, there's a little tick button so I can tick it off and just, you know, feel like I've gained something for the day. <laughs> Amazing. Because there's no tick off button, you know. It's no, like, there's none, none whatsoever. <laughs> but it's like, that's kind of, I just find that really helpful. And you can also, uh, you know, at any point, you can kind of get rid of it all anyway. If you're like, I'm just, I just don't want to deal with any of this anymore. Completely. You can just be like, okay, oh, you know what? So I've made good. all my changes, but and then you're back to where you are. And then this means that if you have it, somebody does it again, like you can import more comments. Yep. Or so it's a great process going back and forth because you don't really have to leave InDesign anymore. Yeah. You can export your PDF from InDesign, send it over, get it back with comments on it and just import it back into InDesign, <laughs> which is what really designers want. I mean, they never want to leave the program. If you have to leave the program, it's like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it just makes everything a lot easier if I can it see sure it all does. in one place rather than, and also particularly when like you move copy around, yeah. Because, you know, sometimes I, I think, oh, okay, I know I need to change this. And you have to go, oh, it's on the second line of the third paragraph. And it's a lot easier to actually have it marked. Yeah, completely. Oh, this is such a great tool. I'm excited that you're sharing all of this with us, especially while you're doing your design for Adobe Residency. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of cool because like I, I learn a lot from watching how other people set things up. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of helpful to me to be able to kind of share that back and be like, oh, okay, well, Completely. how does everyone else do stuff? And, you know, there's something quite nice about it. So we've had a, a I'm noticing chats going a little grid crazy. They're, um, they're grid punned out. They're like galloping grids. Oh, the grid puns. <laughs> grid is the way. I have a grid life crisis. You guys are crazy and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think there were this many like puns. Oh great, there's Chris. an awesome question from Clarice Gipolano. Uh She's like, how do you resize the cursor in the middle of the image? Yeah, okay, so I, slightly controversially, I don't work with a mouse. I prefer to work with a oh, your trackpad? trackpad. Yeah, that's great. I mean, you're on the go a lot. You're traveling yeah. here, there. You're in Leeds, you're in London, and now you're in LA. Yeah. Only L places, that's all she travels <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, that's, that's the specification. Yeah. I live in Leeds, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> that be weird. That would be really weird. You're like, I only go to L places. You're like, and my last name is Lee. <laughs> That's a pleasure project in that. Yeah, where right? Where are you go places with your name? Where would you yeah. go? L places. But yeah, so I, I, I prefer using the trackpad. So yeah. what I'm doing here is I'm just, I literally just left clicking on the little circle in the center. Amazing. And then I can use two fingers as you would on a phone to yeah, zoom in and out. exactly. It's exactly the same as what I'm doing with the trackpad. And then it allows me to just adjust my Perfect. Images. There you go, Clarice. Yeah. We've got you covered, grid or no grid. We know how to scroll and curse. <laughs> <laughs> That's the short for cursor. <laughs> it's, it's not the but we also short. can curse. We're just not going to do it until after the show. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I mean, we, yeah, this, this, is, this, is, this is a safe space. This is a safe space. That's right. This is a design safe space. <laughs> grid life. <laughs> grid life. Uh, so funny. So if you guys have more questions for Isabel, uh, please do ask, even though there's a lot of grid hop and grid life and grid crisis and all the grids. Um, I'm really excited to have Isabel here because she's one of our Adobe residents. And uh, the other cohort is here too. Nadine is yeah. here with you. Um, is Aaron here as well? Yeah, Aaron's here. So Aaron, yeah. Yeah. Me and Aaron here. have been working on a project together in London, another L place. Yeah, that can I go you tell us a little bit about this secret project you've yeah, been working on? Yeah. So, <laughs> so essentially, um, a little while back, um, before I started the residency, I 
um, tried to visualize some phrases that people gave me through like an internet comment box. And one of them was, I'm bitter. And I, and I thought, oh, visualize like when life gives you Yeah, lemon. totally. And so I kind of made this sort of funny image and I photographed it I myself. I love this. Um, I'm not a great photographer, I'm no, okay. No, I think this is wonderful. And so it kind of started this whole conversation about like, how do we visualize like particular phrases? Mm -hmm. And Aaron's doing a lot of projects with food this year. So we thought, well, why don't we try and visualize food idioms? Fantastic. And then we were like, why don't we try and visualize ones that aren't English? So oh, I love that. We've got yeah. a lot of these kind of, we asked on Instagram for people to submit these phrases and we got some really cool ones. So we've sort of shot these still life series kind of in the, in a similar style to what I kind of worked with before, but it's a lot more exciting because mm -hmm. Aaron's background's in fashion. So they're a lot more dramatic. Oh, fun. I yeah. like this. It's like drama food. Exactly. So oh, we're hoping that. to release those soon, which is going to be really exciting. I'm looking forward to that. So where can we find those when you're going to release them? Is I, this something that we'll notice on your Behance page? Page. Yes, so I always awesome. put everything on my Behance, so um, if you want to see what I'm up to. That's right, so if I'm you guys follow something. Isabel Lee on Behance, you can see what a typical, which is your studio, yes. and is that in Leeds in London and LA? Uh, it's based <laughs> wherever I am, I have a business partner Nomadic. as well, so it's not just me. <laughs> love but, it, love it. Um, and then the other thing is uh, I'll also be sharing on my Instagram. So I also share a lot of found type and stuff on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, you can see some pictures of me. Someone was asking about your type earlier, if you yes. could show your font that you created. Oh yeah. So I, last week I made a font, um, which was based on some of the, like, some of the signs like these that uh, we Beautiful. saw in Italy. And um, I've oh, got I it love Italian type. Oh, it's so the best. nice. Yeah. In fact, I've got it installed on my machine. <laughs> Who out there from chat is watching and they're from Italy and you have the best type specimens in the world? Please raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a lot of really like kind of interesting, more traditional typography. There is. And so um, I'll see if it's installed. It I mean, the be. Bodonis of the world, all Italian. And I, I know that I have some very, very famous French uh, typography friends that would tell me that French is where the typography is at. <laughs> And I would probably agree, but <laughs> while we're talking about Italy, I love the food, so I'm and going with Italian really type. And also, they're all their signage for their restaurants is really good, so it's totally a good right? excuse to I go. Know. It's great. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, so this is what I was working on last week. Yeah, you showed this last week in Adobe Live. Exactly. So uh, for those of you who missed it, you can always go on replays and watch uh, Isabel from last week and see what she was working on and yeah, see all can... of the different iterations of the font. Because <laughs> I'm really interested in finding kind of the typography you see around you, and that inspires yes. all the projects. So yeah. Yeah, there's, Beautiful. there's some fun fonts out there if you want to take it. Yeah, Anita's like, yeah, that's a nice font. It is, Anita. <laughs> Can we download that font anywhere or purchase it? Uh, yeah, you will be able to. I'm still finishing kerning it at the moment. Nice. Um, but when it's done, I'm going to put it on my Behance and then you guys can all Perfect. be welcome to it. You're like, you're welcome to it. You are, I, I like that. You're just like, just have it. <laughs> but I think, I think it's, I like the kind of sharing culture. I do too. The open source is really fun. And plus now with uh, Adobe Fonts being free with your Creative yeah. Cloud subscription, it's kind of pointless in, our, in some ways to sell your funds. Don't say that. I've got to make a career well, no, no. out of this. <laughs> It's not completely pointless, but I mean, there's just so many good ones for free with your subscription. There are. So. And, and also, if you're learning how to make typefaces, sometimes it's really cool to like look at other people's and completely. pull them apart and just sort of just just see how things are made. And that's kind of a really good way of getting to grips with sort of your own stuff that you're trying to exactly. do. Exactly. Uh, one of the chat viewers was asking, what's your favorite new InDesign tool? Honestly, I think that it's probably the PDF comments because that's going to make my professional life working with client amends and things so much easier. And I know so that's really easier. boring, but no, actually... No, I mean, it's all about, you know, what's going to make more yeah. availability for design, you or, know? I You'll know. have more time to design and less time to have to sip through a PDF. I think, but I think also, I think actually the integration of um, the Typekit stuff is also going to be really helpful. Oh yeah, that's what I'm most looking forward to. Plus, because it's both an InDesign and Illustrator. So it's then you can, just you can kind of already like preview all your like character styles and stuff if you're not really completely, sure. Completely, completely. But the other there's actually the the color fonts thing is another really interesting one I don't think we've touched mm -hmm. on yet, um, which is that there's also these SVG color fonts which have been introduced. Oh, cool. Yeah. So what Let's that means look. is uh, I installed one of these on my machine this morning. Oh, got Rainbow Wheel of Death. Rainbow Wheel of Death. <laughs> oh, I love it. There we go. My computer's not happy today. No, um, it's not unhappy. It's just like it could be happier. I think it's jet lagged. I think my computer. <laughs> Your got computer's jet totally jet lagged. It's like what we went from Leeds to London to SF to LA. It's just, it's just not happy. Yeah. 
But yeah, so we're, there's also now these kind of SVG color fonts. So one example is Trajan. So here. cool. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see what I'm working on. SVG color fonts, everybody. If you haven't heard of them, they are here and they are new and you can customize the color. Exactly. So which is super rad. <laughs> And so all of these have got kind of all these different colorways built in, so you can turn it like red and purple mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, which is, is also really fun when you're doing it. So it's just going to make designing your layouts actually a lot quicker. Yeah. Because you can just almost preview everything and work through everything a lot faster and even your amends now. Oh, fun. Um, Paul Alvarez the third, because there was two before him, yeah. says he really wants one of your PDF final pins. Oh, yeah. Thank Paul, you. if you're here at Max, you can have one for free at the booth. So I hope that you're here if you're lucky enough to be here pretty awesome um, I think we have one over there too maybe we can get a close-up on it here we'll have you hold it and we'll just put it out as far as we can <laughs> pretty cool to see yeah uh, maybe back by your face here we go oh there we go oh yeah right in front you're like yes perfect so Isabel has those, and are you selling those too? Uh, yeah, so I mean, actually I designed them for Max, but I had a, I put it up there on my Instagram this morning. Oh, and, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> and a lot of people kind of commented and were like, oh, I want one, but I'm not at Max, so. But I'm that's hoping. okay, you're gonna be selling them soon. <laughs> yeah, so like this is just like on my hotel bedspread this morning. Again, but. yeah, another reason to follow Isabel so that you can see when she's selling, what's going on, and what's new on Behance for her. So yeah, like, definitely follow along. I mean, it's always really exciting as well because like, I, you know, when you're doing these kind of things, I've never done anything like this before. And then when you're doing stuff and people ask me questions, it's like, it's, it's just amazing to see how everybody's really engaged. Totally. I think that's what's so great about the Adobe community is everyone's one, really supportive, but then two, extremely interested in what's happening and what's you know new for design. Uh, very helpful in chat. So if you guys have never seen an Adobe Live show, this is uh, one of many and we're live at max, but every week from Tuesday through Thursday, you have the chance to learn from very amazing designers from all over the gamut of graphic design, photography, illustration, XD, UI, all of it. Um, every week is different and every chat is always pretty supportive and awesome. Yeah, I honestly, I found like, I was really terrified the first time I went on because but you loved it. Expect. You totally yeah. loved it. <laughs> no, it's, and it's really cool also to see kind of how people react to your work and the things they have questions about and the things that they find interesting. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's a really cool experience. Amazing. If you have the chance to do it. Yeah, it's pretty great. So how long are you in the Adobe residency program for? So the, the program's a year long. Um, and I'm six months in. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you've I, done quite a bit in six months. I, That's very impressive. I think it's 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 the best when you're kind of willing to just throw yourself into it and see what happens. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I designed a product collection. I had a small exhibition for that. I've started with variable fonts. Incredible. Yeah. And then I've obviously done some collaboration projects too, because I'm just kind of interested in kind of exploring and seeing like how far you can push things. So exactly. And out of curiosity, Mournier's asking, is this our first time at Max? This is my first time at Max. Yeah, is it yours? It is. I've never been, I've never I've been never to been Los been Angeles Max before. Oh, all. really? Yeah. So it's your first time in LA too? It How is. cool. It's really awesome. cool. Awesome. <laughs> Everything's very extra here. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's really fun. <laughs> I was like, I was like walking the other day, and there was like a post-it note, uh, like a my name is badge on the on the ground. Uh -huh. So my name is actor, and I was like, that's like peak LA. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> peak LA for sure. <laughs> that is exactly what LA is. It's awesome in every way and very big. Very big. <laughs> yeah. Like even this conference center, like trying to get to the like live booth from like the the lunch hall. Takes, oh yeah, like, it takes a half an hour to <laughs> yeah. walk across there. Max is huge. I had no idea it was going to be this many people. I think there's over fifteen thousand people here, uh, which is incredible. So I highly recommend jumping over to Max. And if you didn't get to come this year, there's always next year. <laughs> and yeah, I think Adobe runs some competitions as well each year. So you can totally. win your tickets. Yeah, you can win subscriptions to Creative Cloud just being on site and uh, participating in some of the uh, different challenges. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> and there's, so there's so much here. There's so many different brands doing really cool stuff and so many like cool like activations. Like Completely. It's always really fun to just have a wander around and see all the really bizarre things that are going Oh, yeah, of course. 
So out of curiosity, um, people who are applying for Adobe Residency, do you have any tips or suggestions that you could give to them that would maybe help them in their search and their, uh, their uploading process? <laughs> so I think the first thing is don't be afraid if you don't feel like you fit into a particular discipline mm -hmm. or that you're starting at one point but you feel like you've got a long way to go. Right. Like, because what they're really trying to do is help you bridge that gap, particularly people who have a really kind of strong idea or a passion and they don't they don't know exactly how to do it without extra help. Yeah. And the other thing is to they whittle down like really heavily by the digital application. They ask you to pitch a project. Mm -hmm. And so make sure that that's really thought through. It doesn't matter like at the end if you get hired, you might change things a little bit, but right. they want to see that you can plan a project and that you can really articulate what you're thinking well. So don't don't skimp on that. Do yeah, it you're like, don't minute. skimp on the writing portion. <laughs> yeah, and just like you know, show timelines, show how you plan to do it, and be honest about the kind of help you need because everybody needs help. Exactly. Like when I started, I said, look, I don't I don't really know very well how to do type design. I've worked with a lot of type, but mm -hmm. I don't know how to design the typefaces themselves. And now I get to work with Adobe fonts and they help me do that. So, so cool. Yeah, I think it's being honest about where you're not yet strong and there's nothing wrong with that because, yeah. you know, young designers or even professional designers that have been doing it for a while, if they're looking to switch their practice, that's also something that Adobe Residency is looking for. So people who may have been in the field but they're looking to go out on their own for the very first time or as long as they're you know, interested in creating some change with their design, I think that there's opportunity for everyone to submit. And also there's no, there's no like, right or wrong candidate. Like, we have people from all sorts of backgrounds. Oh so, yeah. Like, I, gra I graduated a year ago and I started my own company. We have people who've come from jobs in the industry. And mm -hmm. um, we've got people who come from, we have one guy who's come from teaching. So you can yeah, kind of come from all from sorts. From anywhere, yeah. yeah. And also, like, all ages too. I think that you know you might be one of the youngest Adobe residencies, but the age uh, span is pretty great. And I think that just goes to show that creativity can happen at any time and you can change what you're looking to do with your career at any moment. It's really the interest and the inspiration of your program, your project, and what you're looking to do. Yeah, and I think that's the other thing is don't be, don't rule yourself out because yeah. you think you're too young or, you know, like, oh, you're doing the wrong field because totally. we have so many different people and they, look, they, they change it up and they look for new things each year, so. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's interesting. I saw a bunch of people that were focusing on film this year from the Adobe uh, ADAA Awards, a lot of students, and they were like, yeah. I wonder if film could be one of the submissions. And I'm like, oh yeah, it definitely like you can. gotta try. I mean, like I, I also, I jump around through disciplines a lot. Like I do work a little bit in film, but, and I'm not like a trained filmmaker. I made a film about how it feels when you can't fall asleep. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, that's um, the worst feeling though. I don't think I could watch it because I can always have a hard time. And I, I mix like animation oh, and this projection. Oh, Yeah. And, you know, I ran all the, these kind of animations through like this old like TV radio. So and cool. It kind of, it kind of looks the way it does this film because actually I'm a graphic designer, not yeah, a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's kind of the cool thing of it is it, like you can kind of do all these experimental Completely. projects and there's always something you have from your discipline that you can you can bring. Yeah, everyone brings a new set of creativity to the to the table. So I think it's really interesting. It definitely is. <laughs> and if you have any questions about it, like, yeah, always ping her, ping her. You can ping her through Behance. You yeah. could ask your questions right now. And um, for those of you who are just joining, because I know there's a lot of new faces in chat, we are here with Isabel Lee, and she is just talking through the Adobe Residency program as well as some new features in Illustrator and yes. InDesign. So it's been a pretty cool show, right? Yeah, it's, it's really nice yeah. actually. It's, it's kind of strange working on air because you're trying to yeah, like, right? multitask you're like, oh, at the hi, same everyone. time. <laughs> but, but yeah, like so, I think so you've had some of the other residents on your stream as well. So yeah, um, I think the Tammy was on here doing some Photoshop stuff. Completely, yeah. And Anna was doing some children's book illustrations. That's so. right. You know your friends. I do know my friends. <laughs> it's because we actually like each other. Yeah, right? The cohort's pretty close. <laughs> so, but it's kind of good because it means that like there's so much that we kind of have that we can help each other with and that kind of thing as well. Completely. Oh, a lot of new faces. Hi, Linda Friday. Welcome. Thank you for joining us at Adobe Max. We are live here on the floor and looking around. There's tons of people here, a lot of cool vendors, and we've got Isabella Lee in the house. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate everybody who's tuned in because like, 
if you're in the UK, it's also pretty late. So yeah, that's right. You probably have a lot of friends and family watching from out I there. I mean, you'd hope so. Wouldn't you'd you? hope so. Yeah, we're all like, hi in the UK, welcome. From the pub, I hope. Exactly, from the pub. <laughs> So we've got about maybe five or six more minutes left. I think what we'll do is take a look at some of your projects in your portfolio yeah. because some people have just joined and they aren't familiar with some of your past projects and also what you've been doing with Adobe Residency. Yeah, so my focus for the Adobe Residency has been a lot on graphic design and typography, mm -hmm. but I'm really interested in the more experimental approach. So the first project I did was more about visualizing language. So uh, I made some clocks that visualize these different kind of feelings about time, whether it's you're feeling optimistic and like you've got an extra hour in the day, yeah. or like all the numbers have fallen and things yeah. don't matter anyway. <laughs> I love it. Um, it's like, oh, you were optimistic and now you're not so much. <laughs> we actually sell these in sets of two because we've had like couples and they don't agree on Oh, it's so funny. I love that. What a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, I did some stuff, I tried to visualize phrases, like somebody said to me that life's a balancing act, so I tried to uh, make a poster that visualized the words balancing act. Totally. Um, I made some scarves, I made a giant version of like fragile tape that we used to like wrap boxes <laughs> up. Completely, I love um, this. So yeah, this is really great, it's good for hangovers. Well. Yeah, right, you're like, I'm very fragile. <laughs> So I like basically I'm always trying to make sort of slightly strange typography posters. Mm -hmm. um, we made one about differing perspectives, and the reason that the, all the campaign images are shot like this is because these come from insights in the real world. Amazing. And then yeah, my second project I was experimenting with variable fonts and looking at how we can sort of experiment with some of this new, really interesting technology. And if you want to go and watch these videos, they actually do have sound. But so cool. um, here you can see um, I did an experiment where I clap and then the microphone picks up and makes the font pulse in time. Yeah, it's and, what, yeah. see what you say and say what you see. It's a very interesting exactly. concept and I love the idea. And yeah, that means it dances to drop it's like a hot place in your so. All right, well, we are just about at time. Isabel Lee, thank you so much for being with us thank at Adobe you. Max, both live and here at the booth. So stick with us, we have a great show. Definitely a lot of sneak previews.